Don't get old by yourself. You know what I mean? Find somebody who you can have a life with. Right. You dig what I'm saying? Don't right. don't do like this. He he was telling me like this right here. This ain't this ain't it. This ain't it. You know, I had all my fun. I did everything it was to do. But looking back, I just should have, you know, I should have found somebody who I could really settle down with and have a life with. Yo, welcome to Expeditionally. I'm your host, Tip T.I. Harris, man. Expeditionally is a place where we have discussions that push the culture forward. We have those discussions with people who are relevant to that discussion. My guest here today, man, uh, really don't need no introduction. If you are under the age of 30, 25, 35, 35, 35. <laughs> you already know, man, you know what I'm saying, Savage. Uh, 21 Savage, man, has been uh, 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 just a force to be reckoned with on the game, in the game, man, of, of hip-hop, trap music. Uh, he's a leader of the generation. Uh, and, and you know, his la his latest project, Savage Mode 2, yeah. has uh, debuted number one. You yeah. dig what I'm saying? Him and Metro Boomin have created a sound that, you know, can't be duplicated. You know, he has a very effortless a uh, 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 effortless flow that he can kind of, you know, really do him in a way nobody else could do but him. Mind me, kind of remind me of Easy E a little bit, bro. Yeah, like yeah, for sure. You kind of put me in the mind of Easy E. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, or, or too short. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but you really got, you know, some some deep perspectives and shit. Like, where does your logic come from? Where did you learn that shit? I probably think just like my mama like that. Mm. Yeah, so I feel like from a young age, like just being around her and seeing her lead by example and just the things that she believe in or what she stand on, like I feel like that molded me to be like more like I think deeper about a lot of stuff. Right. Like I ain't really, you can't really put the wool over my eyes for real. Right. Uh, and, you know, I think that is a level of, of wisdom and maturity that you don't necessarily see a lot. Uh, it, it's not expected right. coming from somebody your age. Uh, and we've known each other a long time. Right, a real long time. Yeah, like, you know, I think when you dropped your first video, your very first video, I started reaching out to you. Yeah. And, uh, and you... I asked you for a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and you told me, nah. Cause what I'm gonna have to take in return ain't even gonna be worth it, and I stayed independent. I probably would have signed a deal if it wasn't for you. Mm. I probably wouldn't even have like what I got right now for real. But I mean, the, but that made me feel good. You know, I had the same conversation with Thug, the same conversation. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, bro, if I give you a million dollars, I'm gonna take ten times as much because you know that's just the way the game go if you want to maintain ownership of your art and, and equity in your art you got to go through those tough times in the beginning yeah. can't yeah. accept no upfront money and cushion yeah. your blow oh god you got to got down go ahead and get it out the mud the same way you would anything else if you want to stand on you know on your principles as a boss yeah and you did that and yeah. i always told you hey man don't worry the money gonna come yeah you did for sure and look like it look like yeah, it made yeah, it. Yeah, that shit came. <laughs> <laughs> that shit still coming. For sure. Hey man, um another thing, man, you know, another way we know each other, we also uh we 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 play poker. Yeah. We play poker. We sit down and play poker, man, you know what I'm saying? Extended hours in the night and the day. <laughs> uh we up all night, all times of the night, man, just playing poker, trading money back and forth, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sometimes he wins, sometimes I win, sometimes yeah. Doc. Or, or rugs win. We yeah. just really just exchanging money back and forth. Yeah. What got you into the love of the game of poker? I probably really would say like boredom. For real. Yeah. When you like, learn. This year. When I started playing with you, when you learn. Yeah, that was probably like my fourth time playing. What? When you won that big ass hand. <laughs> yeah, that was probably like my fourth or fifth time playing for real. Man, um, um, uh, he talking about so so if anybody know how to play poker, man, so uh. So, so the the I mean not the Savage had a Savage had a boat. Yeah, full house. He had a full house, man. And if you don't know how to play poker, I don't have time to you know catch you up on it. But those of you who know how to play poker, you know how how rare this is. So, Savage had 
a full house, and he was betting hard on the full house. I fucked around and got quads. <laughs> <laughs> so he been hard as a motherfucker on the full house, and like he like, man, I know you can't beat me. I'm like, well, I'm betting, and you know, I, I turn- checked once though, and then you bet. Yeah, I knew you had cars then, you but I had, had the car. I had the car. Yeah, you, can, yeah, you when, when, you can't get stuck out there with a boat, man, in that car. Yeah, you know I had I mean? the, then I had the biggest boat out there, Aces over. Like, yeah, Aces over fold. No, I had Aces over Queens. So what did I have? Quad Queens. I had Quad Queens. I thought it was so. I done had Quads two times then because yeah. I remember them Quad folds too. You had Quad Kings. Mm. I mean Quad Queens because hey, the, the flock came. It gave me trip aces and it gave you trip queens. Okay, gotcha. The queens paired up. That gave you quads and it gave me the, nut, boat. the nut boat aces over queens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we, that that was man. His savage say, man, I ain't even playing this shit no more. <laughs> that man walked up and got him, <laughs> walked away from the table. Yeah, I ain't, I'm a sore loser. I, I don't know why, but I'm a sore loser. Man, um, you were also uh uh you were able to get Morgan Freeman. To yeah. narrate your project for Savage Mode Two, yeah. What was the process of that? How did that come about? Man, I ain't, I I I down there want to say that was the easiest thing about the album. Mm. Like we got Big Rude to write it, and um, he sent the script to Morgan. Like Metro, who we, knew Morgan Freeman though? Nobody. We just like reached out to his management. Okay, got you. So boom, like Metro already had an idea. Like we need somebody to just say some words. Mm. throughout the album and at first we was gonna use Big Rude mm-hmm. but then I think either I or Metro one of us was like man let's see if we can get Morgan Freeman Dope. man he did that shit he did every line that we sent what? like with no pressure no nothing man that's wild and he charged the, the, the fee that he charged was so small like you wouldn't even yeah. believe it like for real like. man I got a Morgan Freeman story man I got a Morgan Freeman story you wanna hear it? hell yeah okay let's go back to I think it might have been 2010, 2012, something like that. Anyway, uh, I'm drinking lean at the time. You know what I'm saying? I'm drinking lean. And keep, I mean, I'm, I'm having act, too. Pint <laughs> sir. You know what I mean? Uh, I used to pour up in the peach, in, in the peach uh, Sunkiss. Sunkiss, peach, peach, family. That was my thing. Acting in the peach soda. That was my thing. Yeah. Uh, so... I had a movie, a movie called Las Vegas, uh, L-A-S-T, Vegas. The movie had Morgan Freeman, uh, Robert De Niro, um, Michael Douglas. Uh, it was just a big, uh, Kevin Klein, I believe. It was a, a bunch of OGs in the, in the world of acting and film. Yeah. I'd already got the role. They had already, I didn't have to audition for it or nothing. They wanted me. I said, I right, bet. So now I'm locked in. Contract signed, everything. My manager hit me and said, hey, man, they're doing a table read where everybody's going to be there. The entire cast is going to be there. And I was in L.A. and I was like, eh, man, I don't know, man. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it, right? And well, they were shooting it in Vegas. They were shooting it in Vegas, but this was this was maybe like a week before they started shooting. They were doing a table read one yeah. time for all the cast members to kind of where well, everybody sit down and read. Right. Their lines. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. So I said, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. He said, Well, you know, you don't want to be the only one that ain't there, and you got all of these prestigious actors, and you don't you don't want to look, you know, what I'm saying like you know, like you disrespecting the crowd. So all right, man. I think about it. I got a lot of shit to do. The only way I can make it is if I drive down from LA uh so I got me a bus and I was with, I think I was with Wayne recording a record we was doing something in the studio all times of the night the table read was at I think like 9 30 10 in the morning so I was in the studio with Wayne probably until maybe two or three got on the bus took the four hour drive down there drinking the whole way sipping the whole way so by the time I got there it was earlier it was too early for the table read it was like 7 30. It was like 7.30, and I had like two hours, so I'd, I'd walk around the hotel room and all that. I mean, walk around the hotel and just killing time. Come time to sit down for the table read. Man, that drink got on my ass so bad, man. I'm dozing off at the table. <laughs> 
falling asleep. Why everybody right? Why now. everybody right there? Matter of fact, you remember Turtle from uh, uh, Entourage? Uh, his name Jerry Ferrara. Uh, well, it, it's a show from HBO called Entourage. Yeah, I remember the was, show Entourage. I well, it was a very uh, popular character named Turtle. Was, uh, his real name is Jerry Ferrara. I think he was also a, a, a he played a lawyer in Power too. Uh, young white dude. Anyway, so Jerry Ferrara, he's sitting next to me, and he keep like boring me every time in my turn. So I wake up and I was like, oh, where am I? Oh, okay. Uh, and so after I had done did this maybe about three, four times, Morgan Freeman from across the table say, son, are you with us, son? Are you okay? <laughs> son, get up. What's, what is your problem? What is, man, listen, bro. <laughs> The man chastised me like a little boy right there yeah. at the table. And then on top of that, man, when I left, when the table read was over, I left, you know what I'm saying, went back, you know, came back to the crib. And uh, I got a call. He said, my, my, my manager said, man, Morgan Freeman said he won't work with you. Morgan Freeman said, he said, he, he, he got to, you, you got to, you know, he can't, you, they don't want you. They know that you already signed your contract. They know that they got to pay you your full rate, but he just don't. Morgan yeah. Freeman won't work with you. Damn. <laughs> Y'all never talked after that? Nah, hell nah. We never talked after that, man. <laughs> I, you know what I'm saying? I get it, but my thing was De Niro wasn't tripping. You dig what I'm saying? Michael Douglas wasn't tripping. None of these other, you know what I'm saying? These other actors that's, you know, on the same level as you wasn't tripping. And for you to be the one, to me, but you know, I still respect the, I still respect the craft, uh, and I, I'm I'm glad I didn't didn't. It's probably because he's a lot older than them, though. That's real, but I but I, I, I the movie tanked. It did. Yeah, the movie tanked. The movie tanked. <laughs> I would have definitely got them a better first week at the box office. So you know what I'm saying? I think all's well that ends well. <laughs> Dodge the bullet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So thank you, Morgan Freeman, for helping me avoid you know uh, a bad week at the box office. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. what he did on your shit is 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 exceptionally dope though. It yeah, was dope. For sure. It was definitely dope to hear him kind of appeal to your generation of the culture. Yeah. That was fine. Yeah. Bridging the gap. Yeah, man. Uh but have you met you met you met him? Nah, I ain't never met you him. You never met him. But uh, you know how the COVID shit going on, so it's like Right. It ain't really a good time to be mean nobody, especially not nobody like he older, like right, they right, more right. vulnerable than anybody. Sure. So, I, what do you think is the kind of like the greatest lesson you learned in your young life? Like what the 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 thing that shaped you and kind of changed you, and like made you take shit seriously. Like early, 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 I probably would say like. Don't smoke weed in the car. Mm. I think that that lesson like applied to my life. Like, what did you learn? Stuff. How did you learn that lesson? Like when I was young, <laughs> I used to fuck around. So mm -hmm. one time, I'm just in the car. We in the hot box, smoking. Like, but we in the apartment, so. Gotcha. So you weren't moving. Mm -mm. You just parked. We just sitting in the car. All right. Police pull up. I'm a juvenile though. Mm -hmm. Police pull up. We smell weed, we smell weed. Now we got the right to search the car. Mm. It's weed in the car though. Right. They search the car, they find some weed, they find a the scale. Mm. Boom. I'm a juvenile, so he wrote me a ticket, but it's still treated, I was on probation. Oh, I was on so juvenile probation. Yeah. So he bring me to the house, woo 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 He like shit. By you having the scale, I could really could charge you with um. It ain't trafficking. What's the other word that you possession with intent? Yeah, possession with intent. Yeah. He was like, that could goddamn. You had to go back to a um. A juvenile. Yeah, a juvenile like a um. YDA. Okay. YDC. YDC. Gotcha. He don't do that. He write the ticket. You tell my mama like, woo 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 woo. I just feel like from that day forward, it just made me think like, damn. Whatever you doing in life, bro, a lot of a lot of people just be like so really stupid when they do the shit. They like it's really a way that you could do shit and it not be stupid. Do, yeah, it. exactly. Yeah. So I feel like that was like a young thing that I went through that just shaped me like, bro, whatever you doing, think like a 50 steps ahead cuz it's mm. really certain things you could do to 
keep yourself out of certain shit type That's shit. Real? Then I probably would say like me getting shot made me value life more. Yeah. Cause I feel like a lot of young, like young black men, like when we coming up, like we really don't f- understand the value of our life because we ain't got shit. So it's like you you you'll be quick to do some shit because you feel like shit. You ain't got nothing to lose type shit. Mm. But I feel like I had my child and I I got shot the same year I had my first child. Damn. So I feel like that was one of them experiences like that just was like, bro, this shit real. Tell me how you got shot or like if you, as much as you could share. Basically, like I'm with my best friend him, well this one. I'm with him, Johnny. Mm-hmm. What's his name? Johnny B. Okay. We in the car. Yeah, around the same age. He three years older than me. Okay. So his birthday, September 29th, 89. Mm. Um, I'm October 22nd, 1992. Okay. This is on October 22nd, 2013. Mm. When this happened. This is my birthday when this shit happened. Okay. We in the car. It's my birthday. He tell me we going to pick up some women. Mm-hmm. We in the car. Somebody open the back door, like, and, like, draw down. Boom, he draw down, he start shooting. So he draw down and say shit, he just start landing. Yeah. Uh. He's, he ain't say nothing, he just start going out. Boom. A whole bunch of shots go off. I end up shot. He end up dead, and another one of them end up getting shot, too. Mm. Boom, he collapsed. The other nigga get out the car, he run, he collapsed down the street. I get out the car. I'm in the passenger seat. Mm-hmm. My he in the driver's seat. My right. best friend. I get out the car. I, I um run, knock on somebody's door, cause I had blood on my phone. So I had that. That was like the old iPhone with right. the, with the square button. Okay. So I, I'm trying to goddamn unlock my phone to call an ambulance. But it's slippery. It it's yeah. You. It's like yeah, and it's you know how the blood dry it's up. Sticky. Right. Yeah. So I knock on somebody's door. Boom. They ain't answering. You knew you were shot. Hell yeah, I knew. I, cause I got shot first off the rip. Where'd you get hit at? I got the first shot I got hit right here in the collarbone. collarbone. Right. Damn. Boom. Then like a couple of on I like I got like some arm shot, like two, three shots in my arm. Mm-hmm. One of them like hit my neck, but it ain't really pierced it all the way, but it was like it still was open. Right. Like bleeding. Then I got hit in my hand and then my finger. Right. So I'm knocking on the door, but I can't move this arm. Like right. this arm over with. So I'm boom, 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 boom. Motherfucker ain't coming to the door. I run back to the car, grab my phone. I think I just like Wiped it or some shit like mm-hmm. on my jeans. Call nine one one. This the crazy shit. I call nine one one. As I'm calling nine one one, the car that the other folks in they ride past. What? But the gun ain't no more bullets in the gun. So I just and your gun. So you hit. I I ain't even got my gun. Uh. And his gun in his pocket, but I don't notice it. I know he had a gun because he he licensed like not licensed to carry, but like he, he had, had a gun. He, in he his ain't had no felony, so exactly. he kept le- legit gun. Exactly. Gotcha. So goddamn. But I'm not knowing his gun in his pocket, and then I I'm right-handed, so my right arm over. Right arm up, yeah. Exactly. So I just lean back, boom. I'm on the floor with the ambulance though. Mm-hmm. So I I lean back. I don't say nothing to the ambulance. I told her I'm shot already, but I don't say nothing when right. the car ran past. I just put the phone down. Of course laid back. not. Time to take cover. Exactly. Shit. I lay back, boom. Pick back up the phone like y'all just got shot. I don't know where I'm at because I really don't know this area. Right. Boom. They like okay. Woo woo woo. The police pull up. The police pull up. I get out the car and I start walking toward the police. Mm-hmm. Police draw down with a pump. Oh, you freeze! I'm like, look, bro, I just got shot in this arm. I can't put this arm in the air. I can only put this arm in the air. <laughs> That's funny as fuck, bro. for real. I'm like, man, <laughs> you I, told them that for real. Yo, my mama. And I'm, what do you say? I'm like, I'm hit. I can only put one arm, on one arm up, sir. Mm. You're like, come over here, come over here, come over here. This nigga see me shot up because my whole. Everything. And they still grab a motherfucker and be all, all Man, kind this of nigga, rough and aggressive. This nigga told me put my arms behind my back. When you when you already hit. I can't even move this arm, period. Like, if you look at my arm, bro, I got like a big ass rod in my arm. Like, you see that scar? That shit go. What he was hitting with? The nigga who shot me? Yeah. They, they had, I think one arm had like a 40 and the other one had a 357. Okay. What you get hit with, though? I only, I think I got, I think this one was the 357 and then all the other shots was the 40. Mm. But goddamn, I couldn't do shit with this arm, bro. Like this, this arm was over with. Like right. I, it took me down to like a year to really be able to even use my arm for real after mm. that. So goddamn, was you rapping at this time? Nah, hell no, nah, hell. Okay, nah. this was before rap. 
I had to make a song. I feel like every nigga in Atlanta had made a song, but I went like <laughs> I went like on the rapping shit. Like, well, right. I'm trying to you went really, pursuing a career. Yeah, I went pursuing a career. Right. So he sit me on the curb. Woo -doo -woo -doo -woo. This nigga made me put my arms behind my back. Now this the fucked up thing. You know, Grady, like, well, where I'm from, the East Side, the only trauma center in Atlanta yeah, is Grady. Grady. Yeah, that the best, but that's the best one to go to. Yeah, for sure. But it's like that's, I don't give a damn all, where that's your I'm only at. option. I don't give a damn where I'm at, man. Yeah, Take you me to, to Grady. Grady. Any kind of trauma, car accident, sure. gunshot, stab. But it's wound. the only option for from my side of town. Okay. And it's Grady ain't that close. Right. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So the ambulance pull up, bro. But before the ambulance pull up, I'm telling the officer, like, my brother in the car. Mm. He come back. He don't say shit to me. But I hear him radio, like, a cold. And I knew when he didn't open the door, he was dead. Because mm. if he was alive, he would have opened the door and tried to get him out. Mm. So I know he dead at this time. The ambulance pull up, bro. The lady say, it's a lady It's a lady nurse and a man, um, Nick, uh, the man who driving. Mm -hmm. They put me on the stretcher, cut my clothes off, put me on the stretcher, boom. She say, God damn, let's pull up and let's take him now. Because if Sarge get here, he'll fuck around and die. Because they'll be trying to ask him questions before they let us take him away type shit. Right. That shit fucked with me. Like, the whole, like, after I really was just thinking about it, like, damn, how many of my partners who, like, I wasn't there, mm -hmm. but they got shot and they fucked around and died because somebody wanted to question them or ask them what happened right. first type shit. Right. But God damn, they take me to the hospital and all that shit. One of the ladies, I had, like, Four, five thousand or some shit on me. She got down, put the money, hurry up and grab the money before the folks got there. Mm -hmm. Gave it to my mama so they wouldn't try and do no extra shit. Whatever, whatever, whatever. But got down. After that, that shit just changed the nigga. That's when I really started rapping. Mm. Like, shit. Like, I'm just gonna try something new. Damn. On your birthday, bro, what birthday was it? 21st. Yo, 21st. That's why you call yourself 217? Nah, hell. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, but it happened on my 21st, though. God damn, bro. Yeah. I mean, man, that, you know, that's an like, and that was your only time, first and only time being shot. No, I got shot, a, like, a long time ago when I was young, but it was, like, some bullshit. Like, it wasn't really, like, no real shot shot. Right, like a like, graze. Yeah, like, shit. some bullshit. Like, um, in and out. Man, that should have changed your psyche. That should have changed the way you think, the way you look at the world, the way you perceive life. Yeah, 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 yeah. I seen you uh on on Big Facts with uh with Big Bank and and DJ Screen, Jay, the 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 homies, and I saw you say something that was so simple but yet so eloquent. Like man, don't and what you said was don't let being gangster make you be no motherfucking idiot. Yeah, for sure. Don't be so motherfucking tough and gangster to where you 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 don't you don't get a job if you got if you got to find a way to feed your family. Exactly. Speak. I mean, just speak a little bit. Like, what gave you that 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 perspective or that insight? You ever had a job? Nah, but I'm an immigrant though. So uh, that's why I couldn't never get a job. So shit, they were tripping on you and immigration and all that shit even before you became Twenty One Savage. Or that just that just happened when you got when you got famous. Nah, they weren't tripping. It's just like the law is the law type shit. So mm. it's like when you a legal immigrant, like I ain't, I didn't, I ain't never had no social security number. I got one now though. But right. You have to have that to get a job, to get like all the essential things that you need to survive in America. Mm -hmm. A social security number play a big role in them it things. Does. You can't really birth certificate, get, social security card. Exactly. You oh, can't yeah. get a driver's license right. without a social security. You can't get a job without a social security. Right. So like that that hindered me a lot. But I know a lot of people uh just how, how did you become an illegal immigrant? How long have you been in America? Well we moved we moved to America probably like ninety eight. So I was probably like six, seven. Okay. Boom. When we came, we weren't illegal. But this was before nine eleven. Uh -huh. A lot of laws changed after 9-11. Mm -hmm. So we came, uh, we had, we came on the, I don't know what it is. I'm, I, I was young, mm -hmm. but I know it was a visa. We had some type of visa. That you was only supposed to be here for a limited period of time. Exactly. Okay. Boom. We leave. My mama, my mama, uncle died. So my great uncle died. Mm -hmm. So we go back to London. Like my whole family is from 
an island called Dominica. Mm-hmm. But like my mama, I'm I'm the first generation. No, my mama is the first generation of our family that was born in London because they used to get a lot of the immigrants from London to come from the islands to come fight fight in the war, mm-hmm. fight in wars and enroll them in the army. Gotcha. So that's how my family get from Dominica to London. Mm-hmm. Okay, boom. We come we come over here. I'm probably like six, Sam. My uncle died. My great uncle died when I'm probably like middle school. This was like sixth grade. How you enroll in school if you ain't got no? It's before 9-11. Okay, gotcha. Before 9-11, you didn't need a lot of that shit. Uh, like my mama had a license back then and everything. Okay. I, I don't know what year it was, but I know it was around whatever happened 9-11. They changed the law, and that made my mama license. She could never go renew it. So probably it had something to do with the Patriot Act. You know what I'm saying? A lot of this shit when 9-11 came, it really just like COVID. This shit just happened to make everybody scared so that, so they can get them do some political shit that they wanted to do that serves their purpose and agenda. Uh, that's just the way this shit works. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I know that law changed shit. So we went over there, went to the funeral. We come back. When we come back, I want to say the same. That I know it was my sixth grade summer going into seventh grade. Mm-hmm. Whatever happened when we came back, um, I want to say like that was, we came back right before it expired. Mm. So when we come back, we don't never leave since then. Okay. Type shit. So I was gone for like, probably like a month, like half a summer. Yeah. We went back. That's why they said he been living here illegally since 2000 something. Because before then, it was, we weren't living illegally. Right. So you just, but, but do you think, could you guys have like just put in for an extension of a visa or filed for some citizenship or some shit? Yeah, for sure. But that shit, my, my, my people ain't had the money for that shit. So that, that's really why we didn't get like, yeah. I didn't ever get it type shit. Shit, man. Uh, I remember when, you know what I'm saying? When they, when they snagged you and I was just like, what? I was surprised as a motherfucker. This, yeah. this nigga's. In illegal, right? <laughs> I remember when we had like a long time ago, we had a uh, I, I invited you to a show, yeah, a show in Dallas, and goddamn, we'll cut around that. Uh, it was a show in Dallas. Matter of fact, motherfucking Dion Sanders asked me to come do this show, and it was it was really to perform, kind of like to celebrate a, a a basketball team or some motherfuckers who posed to be going pro and posed to be like some real blue chips or some shit. And uh, and then, you know what I'm saying, of course, they had the cheerleaders there who was also some, you know, little teenage girls and whatnot. And so they asked me to come, and then I I, 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 I tell Savage, I tell you what, I got five grand for you to do this show, but you got to get yourself there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Well, t- t- tell me your perspective. Tell that story, how that happened. Uh, You hit me like shit. I got some money. I got some shows lined up in Dallas. You can get to Dallas. I got some money for you. I went and got a rental. My manager, Measy, got me a rental in his name. Mm. I got a rental. Shit, and I drove. Me, was you with me? Yeah, you were locked up. Uh, me, Alea. I forgot who else went with me, bro. That shit was so long ago, bro. Man, you had a, you had a van full of motherfuckers. Yeah, man. we drove. I think we came two cars deep because I think new to them were with us, too. Bone, I think some somebody. It was, was a van full of you, motherfucker. Somebody, we had two rentals. It was a Har- lot. Harold went. I think it looked Chevy like y'all went. nigga brought the whole apartment. Harold went. Chevy went. Quinn. Nah, Quinn went. Quinn went with me. I drove. I know in the car it was me and Alea, and I drove the whole way there. I just booted up, drove the whole <laughs> way there, nonstop. Hey man. Uh, and so when we get there, right, and we and Savage do the show, I, you know what I'm saying? What year you think that was? 14? That was probably 15, 14, 2014, the end some of shit 2014. like that. Yeah. Yeah. And that was before I dropped my mixtape. I ain't had no mixtape out then. Yeah, I don't never, nah, it was just the one video you had. Skirt, skirt. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, 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 that one video, I said, man, this nigga here hard. And I called you. I don't know how I got your number or nothing. I just reached out to you at the blue. I did. It was we went through somebody though, bro. I don't remember. I you know what I mean. I just know because it wasn't no DM or nothing. No, no, hell no. I actually got you on the line and told you to pull up, and it was the studio net though. 
Yeah, dark. But I'm trying to think. It had to be through somebody or somehow. Man, I don't, I don't know. I don't could, know. I, I don't remember, but I know when I saw that video, I said, "Man, this motherfucker here, he 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 going he going to do some shit." And I reached out to you, you pulled up on me, we began to develop. The first thing he asked me, man, shit, Tip, give me a million, man. You got it. Just give me a million, man. You know I'm I say, bro, I, it don't work like that. Yeah, I don't God. even want to create no false illusion of, cause I'm gonna end up fucking you over if I do that. Yeah. Cause my million gonna have to represent six, seven times that for me to make sense out of oh, why God. I'm giving it to you right now. Oh, God. But if you keep doing it, how you doing it? The money gonna come. Yeah. And you know, I remember uh I remember another time I think we was in I know I was in New Orleans. I think you was on the phone. I was shooting at a fucking Roots movie. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. You was on the phone. You tell you told me, man, I ain't even gonna lie to you, bro. A lot of motherfuckers telling me I shouldn't even be fucking with you, man. <laughs> what the fuck did motherfuckers say? Like why did they like what was their justification of telling you not to fuck with Tip? Nigga just used to be like, man, tip tight. Tip tight. Tip tight, like what? Tight with the money? With the money, yeah. Tip honest. They used to be like, tip tight. Tip I ain't gonna got now. Woo -doo -woo -doo -woo. But nigga probably say that same shit about me now. <laughs> Back then, but. But I what had... with G about you, though? You told me that. Yeah. You didn't take what somebody else told you about me and choose not to fuck with me and just keep it in silence. You say, man, I'm gonna keep it real with you, bro. Motherfucker tell me not to even fuck with you, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, I remember that shit. Hey, man. Uh, man, you have, a lot of, you have a lot of principle in your character. It's a lot of moral. You're a man of consequence, a man of conviction. You know what I'm saying? You ain't just really just going for whatever. You ain't just going with the flow. Nah, hell no. Nah. And that shit, man, that shit got there hard to come back. That shit hard to come. You say you think that your mama put that in you. Yeah, I feel like my mama and just me just growing up the way I grew up type shit. Right. People I grew up around, the shit I used to see, like, I feel like I was born in the, the last era where the cold was the cold. Right. Type shit. So I feel like a lot of that shit like rubbed off on me. Mm. Before it was just the wild, wild west. Right. You know what I'm saying? What about pops? What about you? You you, you ever have any contact with your dad? Like I, my mama, boom. My mama and my real daddy, she only got one child with him. That's me. Mm -hmm. She got four other children with my stepdaddy. He came out here with us. Mm -hmm. like, but but he, from, he from London too. Yeah. Got it. Right. So we came, we all came together. <clears throat> so he was in my life, like most of my life. Right. Since, like he was with my mama since I've been born. He been in her life. Right. So he was my father. My real daddy, I ain't really like. You ain't never fucked with. Like, but I feel like the distance fucked it up. Cause like when I, from what I remember when I was a child. Mm hmm he was in my life when we lived in London, but I feel like when we moved over here, it fucked up our relationship mm. type shit. So I don't- You I ever talked like, to him since? Nah, I ain't talked to him since I was probably like, like voice, heard his voice, like talked to him on the phone. I probably ain't talked to him since I was like 12 or some shit. You interested? Not really, cause it's like, I'm a man now. Mm -hmm. and like, I don't care where my child at, bro. I'm finna be in your life. That real? That's real. I, I, don't, can, care, I, can I don't care what I got to do, where I got to fly to, I what that. I got to do. I'm going to make that shit happen. I feel that. So I feel like if you let that come between our relationship, then you really it want really shit. Yeah. What if he reach out to you, though? I, it's too late now. You wouldn't even sit down? Nah. Cause that's, <laughs> that, that's, just like, that's just like, goddamn. If I was just like, I just wanted in my son's life and then he just make it to the NBA, it's like. Okay, you saying you think now he just you you would question his motives? Yeah, but you question I'm not, why he want to sit there. But I wouldn't even say that that this is his motive. But right. it'll just I, it'll still be a question in the air. Yeah. It's like nigga, I'm you 20, can't trust it. I'm 28 years old, bro. Right. Like I got shot, nigga. If my son get shot, bro, you I'm, dig what I'm saying I'm hopping on the first That's thing real. smoking. There's a lot of pain in that. There's a lot of pain in that knowing that a motherfucker know you were damn near finna die and still didn't goddamn reach out. Oh God. But he might not have known though. He know. He knew. Cause one thing, my mama, my mama, my mama never been the mama that said fuck your daddy. Mm. My mama always been the mama that that said give him a chance. Mm. Uh, uh, 
don't think like that about it. Uh, reach out to him or whatever, whatever, Man. since I was a child. She ain't never been the, I'm going to sever his relationship with his father ever in her life. That's solid. That's like, solid. Period. So I know it wasn't never no thing where he didn't know. He always knew. And my mama used to always tell him, like, you got to do more because it's going to be to a point where he ain't even going to gonna feel like he had never had you. So you mean to tell me that uh, so your mom was actually talking to him? Yeah. And suggesting for him to reach out to you. Yeah. And, and he still didn't. He tried to, but it was too late then. It's like, you, you, I think my mama told him, come over here, come see him. Mm. He, he in the hospital. Mm. And I, I feel like she said, like, he tried to, call, he tried, matter of fact, she, he was on the phone and she tried to hand me the phone while I was in, and I said, I don't want to talk. Type shit. Of course. I mean, shit like that. But my mama ain't never just. Have you heard about the kind of person your dad is? How do people describe your dad? I feel like, like my only relate, my only way of knowing how my daddy was was from that side of the family. Mm -hmm. So like, I know what my mama done told me, but we ain't really just had no too many. Did she say he was like a was he like a square? Or is he like he a hood nigga? Like what kind of? No, nah, he he like a hood nigga. But okay. He smoke weed, shit like that. Okay. But he, uh, I really don't know, cause it's like it ain't like he from another city. Like this shit is like a whole nother whole country. country. So it's like, and I feel like our relationship fucked up I, my relationship with my siblings too mm, from that side. Got it. And just that side of the family period. Would you really speak? Would you speak to them? Yeah, they I, reach that? yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, shit, but I feel like I'm a grown ass man now, so it's down there like it's and like look, going to a family reunion. Yes, yeah, with a bunch of people you don't really know. Exactly. Yeah. See, this is I'm, I'm gonna give you a a story of mine. Like, so my daddy was, my daddy was um, he was a hustler in New York, man. You know what I mean? He was 50 years older than me when my mama had me. My daddy was 50 years old when I was born. My mama was 22, so my mama had there was goddamn. <laughs> she done ran off to New York with a. 48, 49 year old man at 19 years old, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Fucked around with 20, 19, 20 years old, fucked around and had me. And so now it's her as a 22 year old, you know, she was going to Georgia State, you know what I'm saying? She dropped out of that to go fuck with my daddy. So and was he, you born in New York? Uh uh, I was born down here. I was born down here, but she took me up there. Yeah. Okay, so my daddy from Atlanta, but moved to New York. Okay. okay. All right, so he from Fair Street, over there behind, uh, over there behind Washington High. Yeah. All right, so he had, you know, his brothers, he had a, a a big family, like four brothers and three sisters and some shit like that. So his brother ran, like they ran the shit from running numbers to, you know, all the, 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 the blow and all that other shit, but they were sophisticated. Or at least my pops, he told me I moved out of Atlanta because I was selling weed at a warehouse well, he didn't tell me he was selling weed, but he told me he got locked up at a warehouse. And my sister, Precious, she told me the real story. So he was selling weed and shit at a warehouse. Yeah, I got the same daddy. Yeah, yeah. My, man, I'm the only one came through my mama. I ain't, my mama ain't got no more children but me. Oh, you the only child. Only child but, on my mama's side. That's, that. but, that's his daughter, too. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So my, 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 my daddy had plenty of children before he met my mama. Right. My sister, Precious, was actually older than my mama. <laughs> no. -uh. Yes, hell, really? hell yeah. My sister Pressure was older than my mama. My her and my mama used to hang out and shit. You know what I'm saying? So my daddy, man, my da hey, my daddy was hell, bro. So, <laughs> so he, so, so my sister Pressure told me that he was working at a warehouse and he was selling weed or whatever. And goddamn, a motherfucker had done told on him while he was selling some weed at the warehouse. He ended up having to, you know, go to jail. Do about I think it's about six months he did. And when he got out of jail. Nigga took off and moved to New York. Cause his brother, uh, Head, I think Head and Pete was up there in New York. So they went up to New York and pretty much put it down in the era of, you know, shit, uh, uh heroin. When motherfucker was coming back from the war, hooked on heroin and shit. So they went up there with that shit. Right. And he amassed a small fortune. My daddy had a million or two. And he was just kind of like, from what I know of him and how people dealt with him and how, you know, he was the man who had it. He was the motherfucker like, man, this nigga got it. I'm finna go ask him what he think about this situation because he know how to deal with money. He know how to think his way through things. And he was just kind of like a uh, like a 
consigliere, you know what I'm saying? Like a mafia motherfucker, the motherfucker come to and say, what you think, uh, help me with this. Uh, you know, he was that kind of nigga. Yeah. Now, my mama, him the 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 first memory the 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 first memory I I remember in life is my mama untying her pulling tape off her mouth from from us being robbed by a motherfucker who came to my daddy's apartment who who uh, I later found out that my other sister had who's also older than my mama my other sister it was her boyfriend. She brought him over there, so then he doubled back. He doubled back when nobody in the house with me and my mama. So he come in. Wait, where y'all, this is Atlanta? Nah, this, uh, this, this is New York. York. Yeah, where y'all staying at in New York? 94th and Columbus. Uh, the 94th and Columbus, uh, uh, Columbus Towers. What that is? Man, this shit is a, shit is a fire, it's yeah. Manhattan. Yeah, Manhattan. Oh, it's, so y'all staying in some Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He had, he had, he owned property in Harlem. He owned a building. Him and his brother Pete owned a building in Harlem. Yeah. And like, you know, candy stores and all kinds of property in Harlem. He lived in the Upper West Side. You know what I'm saying? So he come in, got down with the pistol or whatever. Separate. I don't I ain't see the pistol, to be honest with you. I never saw him with a gun. My mama told me he had a gun. He showed it to her, made sure he hid it from me. I wasn't but two years old, she said. Right. So got down, he separated us, take her in the room, sit me down in front of the TV, put some cartoons on. And him and her in there back and forth, and she he asking her where the money at and all, all this old type shit. And um, but the motherfucker was nice and fuck to me, made me serious, took me to the bathroom when I had to go to the bathroom. Like I, I couldn't tell we were being robbed. Right. You know what I mean? Not that I would have known the difference anyway. But so he left. I remember him leaving. And when he left, I thought it was like one of my daddy friends who just happened to have been coming back. So when he left, he yelled out, the key on the zebra, the picture of the zebra. And you know what I'm saying? So like, you know, it was a wall in, in the living room. It was a white wall and it had different pictures. You know, it was a picture of a zebra. It was a picture of some cars. It was just like different, like art type pictures, right? And the zebra was the top picture. So I go in there with my mama and she handcuffed to, to a big ass recliner chair, tape on her mouth and her feet were tied up or whatever. Well, they might not have been tied. I don't remember. So I would go up to her and I, Pull the tape off her mouth and I say, Why you tape your mouth up, mama? He think you talk too much. And she say, But help me get in here. You know what I'm saying? So and I, I go in there to the room with her and uh I couldn't reach the zebra uh, uh picture, so she kinda like banged the chair up against the wall, and when the key fell, I grabbed it and loosened her up. Okay. My daddy's brothers and sisters and shit. Put in his head that she had something to do with that. Yeah, mama. Yeah. Like thinking like, man, she set you up, bro. She set you up. Blase, blase, woo, woo. Okay, cool. So that's when I moved back to Atlanta. My mama Did and my dad. Did he get the money? Up. Yeah, he got the money. Yeah, he got the money. He left out of there with some hundreds of thousands. He left out of there with some hundreds of thousands. He got the money. All right, so we moved back to Atlanta. Now, the reason I know my mama ain't had shit to do with it, because I know when we came back to Atlanta, we ain't had shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, we would have had some shit. It would have been, you know what I mean? It would have been something to show for. Oh, so I know she ain't had nothing to do with that. I ain't find this shit out until I was older and grown. But I never fuck with my daddy's brothers and sisters. Never. Didn't know why. Never fuck with them. I didn't know why I didn't fuck with them. But I just didn't, I always just felt bad energy from them. You know, I fuck with my daddy. But when it come to his brothers and sisters, I just always felt like they looked, because I was the first boy. He had a bunch of girls until me. Right. So I guess they saw me as a threat, like, isn't it going to leave, probably going to leave him all the motherfucking money and probably going, you know what I mean? Yeah. That kind of shit. Yeah. So I felt some. I just felt a weird energy from them all the time. I remember being 15 years old, I started selling dope and moving around in the streets and shit. And goddamn, I got fucked around, I got locked up, went to juvenile and shit. My daddy found out about it. And my dad was the type of nigga, he always consult with people. He always asked people, like, what do you think about this situation? So he asked his goddamn brothers and sisters. Really, it was his sister Florence. She dead now, but his sister Florence, bro. She was a real, I think I'm better than everybody. I'm uppity and I don't have, you know yeah. what I mean? I don't understand what other black people going through. Right. Because I'm out of it, so I don't give a fuck. Right. 
Man, this lady told, and I ain't never spent the night at Florence's house. I ain't never had no relationship. We ain't never had no kind of interaction at all. But I was bad as hell. So he asked her, and she say, you should send him to boarding school. You should send him away to boarding school. You should send him to military school. That, that, what, he, that what he said. And uh, he come to me with that shit. He say, man, I'm sending you to military school. Because that what everybody say you need. I say, huh? You sending me well? I say, so whoa, so whoa, whoa, you think I'm finna leave my mama in these section eight apartment while I go to I go away to military school and you think, nah, bro, I ain't going for that. He said, well, I'm gonna cut you off. I say, nigga, I'm cut off. And that's it. And that was my plug, to be honest with you, man. That really like, I used to go to New York every summer and get fresh for school, come back and have like bubble coats and, you know, just fresh shit that I wasn't able, my mama was never able to get me that when nobody else, you know, had no goddamn real, real, uh, ability to do that but him so I knew the sacrifice that I was making when I said well fuck it then cut me out so that's what he did and I remember my uncle one of my uncles in prison at the time Quint was in prison man was still moving around man back and forth from here to New Jersey man doing whatever the fuck he was doing and my mama telling me hey so Quint and man that's your mama brother Quint and man and my mama's brothers right. yeah 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 right. yeah and they kind of who told me early on like how my daddy was. Right. They were like, man, look, when we couldn't get no work nowhere, your daddy got up five bricks. He sent them in fish from New York City. Yeah. He's the real deal now. Yeah. Don't get it fucked up. Don't think. Now, he done got old now, and he kicking it with you because you his son. But, nigga, let me tell you something. Your dad is serious. Yeah. And I was like, man, fuck that nigga, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they were telling me, hey, man, listen. He getting old. Cause at the time we were going through this, he was sixty five. I was fifteen. He was sixty five. Right. I was. Th I was just thinking that on God. Yeah. You know I mean, he, they, he like they were like he getting old. Goddamn, you don't know how much more time you gonna have with him. The worst thing you could do, cause we didn't talk for like three years, bro. They were like the worst thing you could do, is let him die. Or now well, they ain't never say let him die. The worst thing you could do is have something happen. And you don't have a chance to, you know, to commu you don't take advantage of the chance to communicate. And I was like, shit, that sounds like some shit he need to be thinking about too. Shit. He know he finna die. If he finna die, he know it. Yeah. He need to be trying to write all, you know what I mean? I just had that kind of mentality. Uh, and the one thing is, but before we fell out, I wanted to be a rapper and I knew that shit. And now, you know, at first my uncle Quint said, you learn everything it is about, you know, about the music shit, about the rap shit. And I'm gonna put all the money behind you. You know, them niggas were selling dope, you know, having their way. But then nigga got sent to prison. So now I'm still learning, but I ain't got nobody who got that push who gonna put that money behind me to send me where I need to go. So my daddy, man, he said, man, what you need to do to get, you know what I mean? And I said, man, I need to get in the studio. So then I got to, had, had to figure out how to get in the studio, where the studio was. And my daddy was the motherfucking one who gave me, you know, he gave me, I think, maybe $350, something like that, to get in the studio. So I went in there and recorded me a little demo and shit. Shit didn't got down, get me nowhere. But he was supportive, even though he's like, man, you need to just go to school, get you a job, man. You know what I mean? But he still gave me the money. And um, before he died, bro, he caught all time, was had to move back to Atlanta. This was around the time I was making uh, uh, I'm Serious at the time. So I was making I'm Serious at the, the time. First he, one. Yeah, about 2000, 99, 2000, around in that time. And he, he was living with my, with my sister, Pressure. She was taking care of him. And his friend, my daddy was the kind of motherfucker, he don't give a fuck how big you is. If he called your friend, nigga Muhammad Ali could walk in that motherfucker. If he called his friend, say, hey man, you know a motherfucker be boxing name Muhammad Ali. Hey man, my friend said, you don't know you, man. You know, then you ain't nobody. If here people don't know you, you ain't no motherfucking body. Yeah. So I remember, right? Me cut, like going to my sister Precious house, seeing my dad, and he always knew who I was, you know what I mean? And uh I remember the look on his face when my album when I'm serious dropped, right? And he say, they say, uh, he say, his best friend name was R.B. Uh, and, and he say, R.B. say you made it. R.B. say you done, you, he say, man, I'm proud of you. You did it. You did it. And that shit made me feel so good. 
You know what I mean? That he died knowing that the shit I set out to do, even though he thought that shit wasn't gonna happen. Right. I made that shit happen. RB still alive? Nah, RB died too, man. Them niggas were old, bro. <laughs> nigga was old, my man. We talking about nigga, man. My daddy moved to New York in the 50s, in 1950. Damn. When he was 20. You dig what I'm saying? He moved up there and made a way for himself. So he was born in the 30s. He was born in 1930. Damn. That's when my daddy was born. You dig what I'm saying? Like my so, daddy was born in the 70s. Yeah, man. My daddy was born in the third in, in 1930. But I say that to say, bro. So how soon did he die after I'm serious drop? Shit, the next year. I'm serious drop October 2001. My daddy died in 2002. So he got Within to see six, it, but he months, didn't get he to see it. He got to see it, but and then he had, he didn't have his. He knew me, cause I'm the only boy. Are you, know you know still saying? the only? Well, boy actually, no, 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 no. I'm the oldest boy. Now I got my brother Bryce. I'm like 11 years older than him. You know what I mean? So how long you known Bryce? Man, nah, I was there. I've been there with Bryce since he was born. Okay. Like every time I went to New York for the summer, it was me and Bryce. Right. That that's that's been my partner. Right. Yeah, you know I mean, uh, I, I always fuck with him. I fuck with him. I f all of the, my daddy's younger children, I always fuck with them a lot more. You know what I mean? Like my sister Tisha, my brother Bryce. We had another sister, but we find out that one really our sister, so it ain't really it ain't, it ain't shit there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so Tisha, Bryce, then uh, of course I fuck with my my daddy's oldest daughter Velma. She was actually my manager. She was the first person. Her and her husband kind of took me under their wing, put me in the studio, and, you know, started showing me, like, how to do the music shit. It didn't work, but I still fuck with them. They let me live in their house and shit. You know what I mean? Then my sister Precious. Precious, I would use, she used to let me come spend the night at her house. Like, she the... Precious and Felicia with the, and, and, and Velma were the only motherfucker who let me spend the night at their house. I was bad as a motherfucker. Wouldn't nobody even let me come around their kids. Yeah. I would have kind of, don't don't be mixing in with that how I, that little bad-ass tip. Yeah, that how I that was. little bad-ass tip, man. He a don't, bad influence. Exactly. That's how I was, like I, a bad apple. Nobody wanted their children to hang around me. You know what You you know what the funny part is? Same motherfuckers were calling me, hey, you think you could uh, get with my son because he, <laughs> no, nigga, <laughs> you ain't want him hanging around me then. Oh, God. What the fuck I'm hanging around him now oh, for? Oh, God. They actually made me feel like I was, they, they made me feel like shit. Like, nigga, I was really cursed or some shit. Like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I started just keeping myself away from people. Like, shit. Like, I used to tell my little cousin, Rashad, and his brother, Damar, they sister, Rakia, my other cousin, Javon. I used to tell them, man, nah, y'all can't hang around me, bro. I don't want y'all hanging around me because I don't want to be responsible. Ain't no telling what I'm going to get into. I don't oh, want you around me. Oh, you know what I mean? And, you know, we work through that. And, and, and you know because as a family we have to we have to build and grow together if you just if you if you say you got a family member and you say man mm -mm, i ain't got damn fucking with you because you this you dig what i'm saying then we ain't family i'm just like a nigga off the street for real you done treated me because if you meet a stranger you gonna base how you treat him off of what he do and don't do. Your family is supposed to be like, okay, you supposed to say, okay, well, this shit fucked up, right? What you're doing is fucked up. I'm finna show you why it's fucked up and show you how to make it better. If you can't do that, then we ain't really, you know what I mean? Ain't no family there. So that's how I felt growing up. So I ain't never fucked with my daddy's side of the family. You know what I mean? I ain't never fucked with him. Not because, you know, I just, I don't know him, shit. And I feel like, just like you said, I don't trust your intentions now. Yeah, it's too late. Now that I'm T.I., what the fuck I'm going? Oh, yeah. Oh, now you want to come around. I'm already a father now. You dig what I'm saying? Shit, don't Andy seen my kids. Another thing, another thing my daddy told me. Only, my daddy ain't never met my kids. For real. My daddy met my first three kids. He met my first three. And he told me, right? He said, uh, he said, man, don't get old alone. Don't get old by yourself. You know what I mean? Find somebody who you can have a life with. Right. You dig what I'm saying? Don't right. do not do like this shit. He, he was telling me like this right here, this ain't, 
this ain't it. This ain't it. You know, I had all my fun. I did everything it was to do. But looking back, I just should have, you know, I should have found somebody who I could really settle down with and have a life with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that, I, I hear that shit all the time. Even when I be on my bullshit, I hear that shit all the time. You know what I'm saying? Have somebody to, to, to that's a big, I think that's that, that plays a big part in me as a family man. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. That shit, there, it, it, it resonated. It you resonated. F- you feel like that shit made you a better man? Like having it made somebody- me a different man. I would have been different. I think I would have been different. I probably would have been on some fucking Mike Lively type shit, man. You know what I mean? I would have just been, shit, a nigga like you probably just, you know, moving around, doing whatever the fuck it is that, you know, feeds my flesh. Do you feel like, you feel like a, a, a man can be happy hmm? without one? Without what? Without a wife? Somebody just to, uh, Go through life. With he can be happy all, uh, 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 until he fall on on on, sh- on fucked up time. He could be happy, yeah. He gonna have a bunch of good days because you ain't gotta make no sacrifices. You ain't gotta make no compromises with nobody. It's all about what you want. It's all about what you. You know what I mean? It's all about you. So you gonna be as happy as you can make yourself. You did. However, you get to you know a point of old age. So happen with you in the hospital and you know what I mean. Your mama, you too old to be depending on your mama with expecting her. You need somebody else there, you know what I mean? And really, it ain't nobody else. If it's just you, bro, just, can you imagine if it if something happened to you or if you was... Let, let's not talk about a gunshot, shit like that. Let's talk about, let's say if... A nigga caught COVID. Caught COVID, let's say cancer. Cancer. Nigga can't cancer, you got to spend all that time in the motherfucking hospital. You got to go through all this shit. You got to goddamn... Uh, 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 make sure you take all their medicine and all that shit, and you gotta Don't do you that feel shit like that's single alone. Selfish though? What? That a nigga would just want somebody because they don't want to be alone. No, it ain't just that. It's other shit too. But you asking me about being happy? If a motherfucker could be happy, you gonna be happy until shit like that happen. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I believe in that shit. I ain't got to I listen, man. I love my family. I love my children. I love my wife. I love my life. You dig what I'm saying? Now, true enough, it's time where the shit get aggravating, shit get frustrating, shit make me want to feel like, man, fuck this shit. But at the end of the day, I say, man, to be honest with you, where you going to find somebody where you can goddamn trust that they there because they fuck with you and not just there because you T.I.? Where you going to go find that shit at? Is you really, really going to meet somebody today and be able to be all in with them knowing that they got them, you know, really there for the long haul. You gonna second guess every motherfucking step in that relationship. You gonna always wonder if you doing the right thing, the wrong thing. You gonna, every part of that is gonna be like, should I, hmm, is it, is it real? Like that one thing I ain't never gotta worry about. If I got them, I know it's real. You know oh what God, I mean? Oh God, God. Motherfucker, we done, everybody done had they out. Yeah. She done had her opportunity to get the fuck out and had my opportunity to get the fuck out. The only reason we stand is because we want to be here. Exactly. Ain't no other reason. Exactly. You know what I mean? She ain't here for the money because she got her own. I ain't here, you know what I'm saying, for the money because I got my own. We here because we want to be here. And that's something I don't know if I could find with anybody else. When do motherfuckers go half and half? Like when you meet a girl, right? Mm-hmm. Y'all move in. Why is a man always expected to do the most? To mm-hmm. cover most. But then I'm gonna tell you why. But then like women have had that argument where it's like, I believe it should be equal. I don't want my words to get twisted, but why it ain't always treated equal? Mm. Well. All around the board. Well, I will tell you this. The dumbest thing anybody ever did in life in the history of humanity is pay the cost and not be the boss, period. I don't give a damn man, woman, or child. You dig what I'm saying? Right. Whoever is paying 100% of the bills have 100% of the say, unless you're married. If you married, well then, the money that you paid with is half hers anyway, so it don't matter. But in a relationship, just a girlfriend, boyfriend situation, if you don't pay all the bills, and that's that's that go for, uh, if a woman is paying 100% of the bills, 
or if a man is paying 100% of the bills. It ain't just exclu- it ain't exclusive to just men. Exactly. If if it's a a man living in a house with a woman and the woman paying all the bills, if she bring another nigga home one day, that nigga need to just goddamn go to the basement. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean because you ain't paying your and then like to me I just feel like men are supposed to be in positions of of kind of like leadership. I just feel that uh, not saying women can't lead, that ain't what I'm saying. I'm just telling you what my expectations of myself is as a man and that 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 is going to set the standard of what I expect to see from other men. Right. All right. I think a man pulled it even if she can pay it. Man, my wife ain't allowed to pay no bills. If you pay bills, you pay the bills that you want to pay for the stuff that you want to do for yourself. Exactly. You ain't got to worry about coming home and paying no bills here. That ain't no problem. I ain't, if I can't pay the bills, my nigga, then it's an issue. Uh, now, there are certain things that I feel like she and I can't collaborate together on. Like, we about to buy a piece of property, and, you know, it's going to be kind of like, more of a compound that we going to grow and build and do this together. So I want some of her money on that because it's something that we doing together. But, and it's secondary. It's a secondary resident. It ain't, we need this house to live in. This is something we want to build for generational wealth and to have, you know, we want to see this shit happen for our children and their children. So we going to do this together. That's something out of my respect for her. I want I want to build and grow something from the bottom up with her. You know what I mean? Oh God! Rather than the house, you know, the lake house, the house you see on Family Hustle, that's a house, man, bro. I didn't even want this motherfucking house. How long you had that house? Man, I had the house. Goddamn! Now it is good shit. Fourteen years, bro. Fourteen years, two thousand six. Fourteen years. So that's a house that she said she told me I always want to live on a lake. I want to live on some water. Like, damn, we in Atlanta. What the fuck? You know what I mean? So I found this place and she showed, no, she took me to this lake. And it's the only lake or the closest lake where you could have a boat, a jet ski, you know what I mean? All on your back dock. And that's some shit that was like, nigga, you don't find that in the city. Oh, yeah. I got a boat. I ain't never bought no jet ski, but you know what I mean? I got like, you know, a little, you know, a little boat with a motor. And that's some shit you don't really find here. Damn, I ain't know that that existed here. Yeah, hell yeah. If you want a house, let me know. Um, <laughs> Goddamn. But so I bought that house, really, man. So we went looking at house, and it was one that wasn't even finished yet. And then we tried to buy that one. And we had the money. I had just got like a, a, a $5 million something and then another $10 million something. And another two million. I was sitting, and plus I was doing shows, so I, you know, what I mean, I, it wasn't no issue. So it was the one house that we wanted. It wasn't a hundred percent finished. It made a had about seventy five percent of it done. The owner wouldn't sell me the house because the other motherfuckers around there, the neighbors, was like, "Nah, we don't want no nigga. Like, we don't want no. Uh, uh-uh, uh, don't sell it to him." Basically, so he's so he blocked me from buying the house. I said, oh hell no. So we got we went to ride around the motherfucking neighborhood asking motherfuckers to sell me their house. I just basically ride down the street like, I could live in that house. That one. Let, 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 let go ask them. And we found a motherfucker and I overpaid like a motherfucker. Just I bought with my pride and my ego. But because she wanted that house, you know what I mean? I later grew to love it. I've been on the lake maybe two, three times, man. I ain't really know, you know what I mean? There's too many mosquitoes and all that old kind of shit. I ain't finna jump in no lake, man. Motherfucker, man, come on, bro. You know what I mean? But I bought it because that was she wanted and we raised our children there. So now it has like a sentimental exactly. connection. You exactly. know what I mean? It ain't really nothing that... I'm a prodigy to keep it in the family. You know what I mean? Because now I done, I done, I, I'm redoing the whole house. Redoing the basement, putting the bowling alley and all kinds of other shit in there. I done redid my master bedroom, master bathroom. I done turned it. I got a whole big ass closet. This, you know what I mean? Like some shit that only niggas like us gonna appreciate that. So it ain't really, I ain't gonna be able to get my money's worth exactly. out of it. I'm just investing in it because I know I ain't finna get rid of it and I want it to be up to my stomach. Exactly. Goddamn. 
But this, this so that house, she ain't never paid a bill, ain't never had to pay a bill. If she wanted something done a certain way, like for instance, she wanted palm trees going down the motherfucking driveway. So that's something she did. She went, spent her money, and got palm trees on both sides of the driveway, and that shit looked good, you know what I mean? Yeah. But that ain't nothing that she had to do. That's something that she wanted to do. So that's how I feel. Your woman should be able to reserve her funds for shit that she want to do within the house. Exactly. Not that it's me. my nigga need me to come in or else we going to be put out. Yeah. If you got down like that then, bro, you ain't really like, that ain't no position of leadership. That's a position of partnership. It's also important for us as, as, as men to think about what makes the woman whole. Like, just think about what make them feel confident and, and, and feel purposeful, feel needed, feel like they doing some shit that, you know what I'm saying? It's important. And I never really, like, we, especially as a young nigga, man, you know what I'm saying? We, we, we be so intent on building, doing, and, and having it our way. We don't even be thinking about what the next motherfucker might experience or how the next motherfucker yeah. might feel. Oh, God. So it's important for us to do that. And I ain't really see that shit. Until I had a daughter. Like I started to see what women go through when my daughter would come to me and be like, yeah, but man, that ain't fair because you don't do them like that. I'm like, huh, yeah, you're right. I don't. But it's different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's different. And it's hard to explain that, but that is a that is a, a battle that women fight from birth, fighting to be treated equally. As men, I feel like it's because goddamn like daughters don't really carry on the legacy like sons do. Mm. They often married into another legacy. But it's more to a legacy than just a name, though. You got principles, you got morals, you got st and and to be honest with you, to be honest with you. The, win, the, the the daughters stick to the code more than, more the, than son. the son. Because sure. when the son meet the wife, the wife gonna goddamn dictate and determine how that shit move forward for the most part. And the, when, the, when the woman meet the husband, the husband gonna dictate too because he man, gonna take not a really, position man, for real, of leadership. Most of the time, the women run the show. Most of the time. I'll give you an example. Let's just say if I get old, right? I get old in the same position as my as my daddy was. Well, I'm, I got Alzheimer's or dementia, or something like that, where I can't take care of myself, right? If I go to my son's house and his wife say, man, it's too much. He got to go. We got to put him in a home. I'm gone. If I go to my daughter's house and her husband say, she going to say, hell no, nah, he going to goddamn set this hospital bed up right in the motherfucking living room. You got them, you know. That, that like it's 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 pros and cons to both sides. I feel like it's fifty fifty though when it comes to that because the son got to say so too. Happy wife, happy life. That what that shit. You know what I mean? So ultimately, okay, if y'all have a breakdown in communication, she feel one way, you feel another way. It gonna be decided by the pussy. It gonna be like, all right, well you ain't get no pussy then, nigga. All right, cool. No pussy for you now. <laughs> now what? And you're like, man, God damn, Pops, you got to go, man. <laughs> like, for real, that really the way that shit gonna goddamn boil down. 95% of the time, this is how it's gonna happen. I ain't the gonna women lie, control feel, that shit with the pussy. I feel like as a man, I'm just naturally more overprotective of my daughter than I am of my sons. Bro. That's also true. This is also true. I don't know why, I don't know what it is, but I just... I feel like it's because as men, we know how we do women. Because sons can't get pregnant. That too, but it's like sons can't get pregnant. But we know how we treat women, so I feel like I just don't want my daughter to ever just run into one of them niggas. But you can't keep her from running into. Nah, one you can't keep her, but I want her to to know how to feel real love, so that she that know how, so she know how to discern what's the difference between right. the two. Yeah, yeah. See yeah. what I'm saying? Absolutely. I think that's that's key. That's key. Being able to motherfucking uh provide the you know what me and me and Lil Duval call it uh thought prevention hours. You gotta put in them thought prevention hours. Keep your daughter off the pole. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you just you spending time going to daddy daughter dances and you taking them on trips with just you and her. 
Those are thought prevention hours that you're putting in. You got to do that. Yeah, don't do that. But hey, going to be somewhere in Magic City, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Trying to figure it out. Yeah. So that is absolutely necessary for any father. If you ain't putting in your thought prevention hour, then your daughter end up a down. So don't blame her now. <laughs> Don't look at her talk about, oh, you motherfucking hot at No, nigga. You didn't set an example. You did not set an example. You did not show what the fuck it was that she should be doing versus what she's doing. Right. So I think, you know what I mean? That has that has a huge... But I, I see... Man. I feel like mothers are more overprotective of daughters, too, than sons. Yeah. I think it's a, it definitely across the board. I want to talk a little bit about... The appearance you made on my album. I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, your your verse on "Thank God" on the Libra. Right. Um. You wasn't even supposed to really be on the album for real. <laughs> it wasn't even like you know what I'm saying. I caught well. I I had asked you, but then I guess you know you got busy and doing shit, and then we ain't never get a chance to get it done. So I'm wrapping up the album. I'm in mixing and mastering mode, turning in the album the last day. And uh, we was upstairs. You were playing. Y'all were playing poker. I ain't play that day because I was focusing on getting my shit done. Yeah. And I was just playing the shit for y'all because I, you know, I ain't asked y'all y'all opinion per se, but I did like I was watching y'all response exactly. and reactions to it. Exactly. So I'll know what the fuck whether or not this shit is goddamn on on key. Right. And as I'm as I'm as I'm playing music all the way down, it get to thank God, and you say, man, see. That's the kind of shit, man, I want to do. I say, shit, man, let's do it. Yeah. And But you, had, but you were up on the table, and you were like, man, I'm going I'm, to I'm be back. I ain't going to do it today. I came back the next day. And you came back the very next day, and you handled your business. Yeah. Now, did you already have that shit wrote, or did you just walk in there and do that shit? I just walked in and did it. Okay, so I'm going to tell everybody out there. This man recorded the fast verb, bro. I'm talking about it. It wasn't even time to roll up a blunt and smoke it all the way, bro. I ain't even bullshit. I think uh, me and me and me and uh, I don't know if Tip, uh, you and, and some of the other homies was in the look the, the lounge next door to the room. We was in the motherfucker, man. We had that rolled up, and before we could finish the blunt, we were we had that rolled. You came out and said you were done. Yeah. How but the fuck you do that? It ain't hard to rap. It's hard to like come up with direction of, of what the song is so i feel like when that's it's like it's already a foundation of the song laid out it make it way way easier like it's way easier for me to do a feature than it is to create a whole song with a hook and everything and be on track so it's like you already had like thank god that we made it here right we went through everything but we here right so it's kind of hard it's easy to just be like I know what I'm gonna say. Mm -hmm. I know I, it's the truth, so it ain't hard for me to just. Truth ain't hard to tell. It's easy. Yeah. Well, shit, man. I just feel like you got down, shared some perspective, and then you kind of you, and then you fell into a pocket too. Yeah, for sure. You know, live by the code. We don't talk to police. Yeah, I'm good. But you, you know already I mean? had that little flow, so right? it's just like change the word yeah 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 but hey man that shit I, I appreciate you for doing it and i appreciate you being in the position that you in uh and, and representing what you represent for the culture and the generation to shed that kind of light to speak that kind of truth right that shit is important because it ain't a lot of motherfuckers who willing to get out there and really say that everybody everybody want to make themselves look the toughest as they can Everybody got there want to pretend like they got a hundred million dollars and got down and shot a thousand guns and then got got down beat seventy five hundred cases. Yeah, you know everybody just want to got down produce this image of bravado without no real goddamn substance to it. Right. So for you to do that, that shit that was that shit that was real solid, man. Um, where you think it went wrong? At? What you mean? But like the morals and everything we stand on, like. Cause it had to come from somewhere. It couldn't just came out of nowhere. So what do you think was going wrong? That was like hurt what? people. Hurt people. Hurt well, people. If a person hurt has people, been hurt, hurt people, they gonna hurt somebody. Exactly. Yeah. So that way it went wrong. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Ambassador, m m one of my mentors, Ambassador Andrew Young, man. Uh, 
who happened to be, he was Martin Luther King right hand man. I know. Yeah. So goddamn, he told me, he said, man, look, I found that the bullshit rolled downhill. White man, white man beat the black man, black man come down on the black woman. Black woman come down on the child. Child kick the dog. Dog chase the cat. Cat chase the mouse. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's really how the shit happened. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like a lot of a, a lot of our father figures and male role models, they felt so ashamed of 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 how they were being treated in society. They just couldn't face us. They didn't feel like they were respectable enough in the in society in the community. They felt so ashamed that they like, man, shit. I'd rather not be there than just be there and be a, and, and, and be a sucker, be less of a man. I'd rather just disappear. You know what I'm saying? Let a motherfucker remember me how they remember me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like that's kind of like a big part of it. Then prison play a big part. Then the dope, you know what I mean? With the crack, the crack epidemic, that shit played a big part of it. Uh, and then it's a lack of education, lack of understanding, lack of communication. We don't even know how to communicate. Yeah. A lot of niggas don't even know how to speak their mind to tell you how they feel. Yeah. Like, you know, a lot of times we just see motherfuckers just blow up. Motherfucker, nigga, I don't know what the fuck you think you in there. When really, you just hurt my feelings. You know what I'm saying? You made me feel small. And I really don't know how to respond to that. So now, I'm just, I'm, I'm just acting out in violence. Yeah. More people don't know. They can't articulate that shit. Yeah. And I think that is kind of what began to the, widen the gap. Yeah. I just wish that shit didn't happen. Well, you know what I'm saying? I think, you know what I'm saying? Change is slow. That shit got down. It take us a little time, but one step at a time, man, we'll get there, man. I, I ain't got no, ain't no doubt in my mind about that. Uh, how many kids you got? Three. How many boys? Two. Two boys, Two. one girl. Yeah. Your girl the youngest? Middle. Middle. Yeah. And you treat your daughter different than your son? Nah. What you mean treat? Like, I mean, like you say, over, more overprotective. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, me sure. too, me too. Ain't no way around that shit. It really ain't. I also remember when we was upstairs talking, man, y'all playing poker and got down. We was just kind of like, we was just, you know, I guess I was just talking. I said a word. You were like, bro, what what that mean, bro? You what word the word? Ascertain. Yeah, ascertain. Yeah, so that's going to be the word of the week. You know what I mean? We have a tradition here where we, you know, we give out a word of the week. Um, and, and, and just because this was actually a word that I used in general conversation with, 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 with Savage and he actually say, bro, what, 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 what does that mean, bro? And I say, uh, and I went through a whole bunch of goddamn words and you say, oh, you mean comprehend? <laughs> yeah, nigga, that's what, that's a perfect definition. So the definition to ascertain is to comprehend. Um, so why the hell do that exist when you could just say comprehend? Well, I mean, cause the English language is so diverse and is, you know, it's the same way, goddamn. You could say the definition of one you, word. You could say you, the other word. You could same thing. I know it. Was, so it's gun, gat, strap. You dig what I'm saying? That's kind of like slang, though. That them ain't real words in a dictionary. Man, every word in the dictionary is another word for it. I, myself, me. Every word in the dictionary, you got another word for it. It's up to you to decide what the fuck But that's you because say. they are placed in different places. Like you say, I in a certain instance. Uh huh. Because you're talking of, about parts of speech. Because vowels and all that type of shit. True. Right? True. I mean, it's just another Ascertain way to. Ascertain means comprehend. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Compre how about understand? Shit. Understand the same as comprehend. Nah, not really. Why not? How so? Understand, comprehend, ascertain, all the same word. You can read. I feel like comprehending is like being able to read something. In. What is the definition of, of comprehend? Understand. That's the definition of comprehend? I mean, let's look it up. Shit. Let's to, let's go to the Google. Yeah. Let's see what the fuck we look I don't see. think that's it. I do. I, believe I think so. comprehend is like to do with reading something and, and knowing what you read comprehending what you read. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Understanding what you read. Let me see some comprehend definition. But you know what I'm saying? These are, okay. Comprehend. Uh, grasp mentally understand. 
shit crazy. I mean, but it's the English language, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's so many different words and so many ways to say everything it is that we say. We had that conversation last night, right? Uh huh. They was trying to explain it to me and I didn't understand it. So we were talking about slavery and how America was built. Okay. So my question was, if the slave owners came from Europe, mm -hmm. England, mm -hmm. they went to Africa and got slaves, mm -hmm. where did the American accent come from? What American accent? Like, you know how we say y'all, or we, or we might say- Talking about the country shit. Like the way, just the, just period. Like the way we pronounce words that don't ain't pronounced in in, 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 in the, the original English language. Okay, what? Spelling, all that. How did that happen? The language of English, well, the English language came from where you from, the UK. Right, right. From, from Great Britain. And so most of those motherfuckers came from Great Britain. Right. And so when they came here, they brought their language with them. Right. But as motherfuckers just continue to goddamn live and, and, and they speak in their own way, and you know that the motherfuckers who came over here, now let me tell you something. Let's say the queen, the queen of England, or whatever, have some, some, she sent out her men, Christopher Columbus and them worked for the queen. You dig what I'm saying? So they had ships and they was said, they was really trying to get to China. They call themselves taking a shortcut, bump into uh, uh, America somewhere. I don't know if it was like uh, some the Caribbean or Puerto Rico, somewhere, some part of what we now know as America. They bumped into this like, oh shit. We done found some shit. <laughs> but they found this shit with the queen's ships, the queen's money. The queen had been paying them. They was on the, the queen's salary. But when they found this shit, it was really pulled to be the queen's. Because you was on the way to China. But what they did was they just stayed over here like, nah, man, shit, we ain't just, just ain't nothing, never going to go back. So then the queen sent motherfuckers over here. Where the fuck these motherfuckers at with my ships? And took my money and ran off. Plus, they were supposed to got their run, make a run to China and come back. And they ain't came back yet. Yeah. So, that's what the, the Revolutionary War, that's what Independence Day is. It's Africans in London, and when they speak English, they don't talk like Americans. Mm. So, where did the American way that we speak talk come from? I mean, we're talking about hundreds and hundreds of years ago. I don't think that it was developed at the time when they got here, but over time, I just don't understand. Like, if you go to London, nobody sounds like an American, bro. Right from the from the but Africans you do know what, to the Jamaicans. But you know what? But but you know what's closer to how uh, uh, people in, in in the UK talk? What's closest to that? New York. Yeah. New Boston too. Boston, New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but so, so I understand that. I don't. I right. just don't understand. I don't even understand, like, okay. It's broken English. When fuck you get us. down to Atlanta and shit, they right. be broken. Alabama, Atlanta, Mississippi, it's broken us. English. Fuck us as black people. That just like, 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 like motherfucking, uh, in, in, in Jamaica. That's yeah, they, they speak broken English. That's broken English. Right, but take us but out it, of it. it but it, it derives from. Take us out of it. Okay. Take the Africans out of it. Take all the black people out of it. Okay. How the fuck did these white motherfuckers from Great Britain, mm -hmm. how did they accent change when they came to America? Where did, where did it come from? Time, time, time. And then they might have, but because it, it, they came from over there, they were trying to break free and be independent. They might have just purposely started saying shit different. That's what it said. Different. That's what, when we looked it up yesterday, that's what it said. It said they started pronouncing the word R. Different to distinguish themselves. Uh, well, yeah, I that don't makes believe, sense. I don't really believe none of that shit, though, bro. I mean, well, you know what I'm saying? It's probably got down, you know, you got different I don't versions. think that's the way it went. The way that we we known for it, it went, I just don't believe motherfuckers really drove ships a month away to Africa, bro. What? Got these people, drove these ships another month away to fucking America and just, bro, I just. I how you, know. so how you think it happened? I don't know. I, I don't believe nothing these people say, bro. It's hard for me to believe. I've been, you should go to Ghana and go to uh, the uh, slave dungeons. It's actually where the, where the ships pulled in, where people, where they first came, the Portuguese first came to Africa. They docked right there and they went and they uh, met with different tribes. And they bought the slaves. That's what they said. Well, they turned... Okay, so it was a, a tribe called the Ashanti tribe. 
and they were running shit, having their way. See, back then, you, was, you could only have as much as as you could take or, you know, as much as your authority or the power that you have would allow you to. Like your dominance. You got, right, you got money with right. your Right. So if you dominant, Shanti, if the Shanti tribe is dominant, we going we gonna to have Run most of the resources. Yeah. And so they've been dominating for so long and been dominant for so long when the white folk or the Portuguese pulled up, they appealed to the people who were being dominated. And say, man, ain't you tired of them goddamn fucking over you? Ain't you tired of them goddamn? Shit, we got guns. We got, we got, and then they say they had mirrors. They said a mirror. They had never seen a mirror. Motherfucker had never seen a mirror before. It's like, whoa, what the fuck is that? Then they had these goddamn weapons and shit that was, it, it seemed like they came from the future, kind of. So they got down, got tricked with the trinkets. And that plus they ego, them being tired of being dominated, is what. That shit really just crazy how, if you think about it, though, bro. Like, back then, like, I don't even know. We don't even speak the same language. Mm. So how do we even communicate with each other for you to even tell me I was being dead wrong? Mm, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like it's either one or two ways. It's either they went in there, they weren't talking, they was up in guns, killing people like, you don't want to be like that, get on this motherfucking ship. Right. Or whoever was dominating sold them. Mm. So the people that they was dominating, the people who were being dominated, cause I I've been there to I seen man it, that shit was that, sh, that shit was, it was weird. If, if you could feel something, you could feel something that I walked in there and that shit just felt. I don't know the feeling. How can you move over there? Like when you, you go mean? over there, can you bring security? Yeah, but you don't really need it. It ain't like they peaceful people, bro. Ain't, not, ain't nobody out there robbing and got them doing no shit like that. It ain't nothing like that. Oh, it ain't like that. When I go to Africa, bro, it's such a relief that I, I, I don't feel like a nigga trying to kill me. If I go would anywhere. Would you ever move there? Because I ain't going to lie. I, I, want, I want to move there. I would. I would. I'd move to South Africa. Like Johannesburg. Johannesburg. Cape Town is beautiful. I'd move to Ghana. I moved to Nigeria. I, you know what I mean? It's different places where you could go, man. That shit is phenomenal, man. Some of the best land, some of the best views, some of the best weather, living that you'll ever that you'll ever experience, bro. I ain't gonna lie, I want to move that when I'm like done with my career and I'm just on some laid back. Man, Jay, go get you some land right now, man. Go take your hundred thousand dollars. Go get you some land right now, my nigga. You could build with a hundred thousand dollar, man. Let's call it three fifty. You know what I mean? But right, you could have some shit like over on where Pace Affairs. Yo, you know, beachfront. You know what I mean? Oceanfront property. That's yours. Motherfucking Ludicrous got a dual citizenship. They had some shit called the Welcome Home or something like that, where people come back to Ghana and cause Ghana was the first place where they really start goddamn packing yes. motherfuckers up, putting they had they have a, a slave dungeon that's like a holding cell. They'll get the motherfuckers in the village, they'll bring them back here, and you'll sit in this motherfucker until a ship came. Then when the ship come, motherfucker want to buy some slave, they'll pull your ass out, put you on stage, and they'll auction your ass off, put you on the ship, and they'll take your ass on. They have some shit called the door of no return. They say everybody back then that walked through that door never came back. So we was just- They, we, probably, they got something on YouTube about we, that. We walked back and forth through that shit. motherfucker a couple of times. You know what I'm saying? We feel, and they feel like it's a prophecy being fulfilled. They feel like the the souls of those people who were took away from there can't rest. And they think us coming back, it we're gonna got down let they let those spirits be able to rest in peace. That's some deep shit. I think shit, man. I think if you if you get opportunity, man, hell yeah, go to Ghana. That shit dope. It's dope. And it's opportunity. Opportunity out there. You know what they ain't got over there? You know what they ain't got? What? No motherfucking blue cheese. You dig what I'm saying? Ain't no motherfucking hot wings. Ain't no wing stop. Ain't no bowling alley. Ain't no motherfucking skating rink. Ain't no, you know what I mean? All the shit that we just take for granted and just have. Nigga, even in South Africa, in motherfucking uh, Cape Town. Man, my old lady was like, man, 
my old lady and her homegirl were like, shit, these ladies over here putting their own motherfucking lace fronts on, and they look horrible. It ain't nobody over there got the money to pay for it, but they don't have nobody who knows the process of putting on a lace front or putting or doing eyelashes and shit like that. It's, they love our culture, but it ain't enough of us over there to kind of like train and show motherfucker how to do it. So any of us who go over there and take whatever it is that we got here over there, that shit gonna win. Shit just gonna win, bro. I think it could be a motherfucking African Instagram. It could be a Af anything that then happened over here. We could redo that shit over there and goddamn be the, you know, whatever we done seen that this shit worked over here, but we were too late. By the time we caught on to it, the shit was already goddamn a runaway train. Take that shit right over there. I'm gonna do that. You dig what I'm saying? I always got that, and that's another thing, man. We always got that uh, trade tactics or, or important uh, strategies on how to kind of diversify your investments and shit like that. Uh, whether it's buying property, we talk about that stocks and all kinds of shit like that. Um, uh, how do you invest? What do you, what do what's your like methods of investment? I like to take risks. Like I like to invest in small shit before it becomes the big shit. Right. But I like property too. Mm-hmm. But I feel like property is, is ain't a fast process. Mm. It's like a slower process. It depends. It depends. It's a more you you have to know what areas you purchasing in that will yield a greater benefit faster. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh and it's always best, even when you buy a piece of property, to have a vision to go with it. Like I'm buying this piece of property because I know what I'm going to do with it. I got a vision or, or, or some ambition that I'm going to turn this into this. That's always good. Another thing people don't know is we neighbors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We stay right next door to each other, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We both got penthouse. We ain't going to tell you well. But you know what I'm saying? We stay on the same flow, right next door to each other, oh, and God. never see each other. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't never even thought about it like that. <laughs> uh. Man, I got a lot of respect for you, man. I love your music. I fuck yeah, with your shit. Sure. And I fuck with you as a person. You know what I mean? Uh, I see you as, you know, a stand-up guy, man of respect. And it's great to have that kind of relationship with a motherfucker from your generation. Uh, because a lot of a lot of y'all look at us as haters. Right. And a lot of us look at y'all as stupid. Right. <laughs> but it's great for us to have this rapport because it sets an example other motherfuckers in your generation that now they gotta sit back and like, damn, well, he can't be too much of a motherfucking hater. He fuck with he fuck with Savage. Right. He fuck with he fuck with Thug. It might be something wrong with me. What am I doing wrong at this point? Right. And then it caused motherfucker from my generation to say, Well shit, they can't be that stupid. Tip fuck with Savage. Tip with shit. Why why I ain't fucking what the fuck? What am I? It it lets everybody else who observing us see that this shit is possible right and i think that's important for the evolution Bridge of the culture the you know what i mean uh and you probably one of the most photographed exhibits at the trap music museum i still ain't been you need to man damn sure got to, this our place that shit is for us that shit is the we run control own operate and have clear motherfucking reins of the culture there. We can do anything we want. Can't nobody tell us to come cut our music down. Can't nobody tell us when and when not to do what we can and can't do. That's our shit. Right. Anytime you have, whether it's a motherfucking album release, a listening party, or whatever the fuck it is, for your artists, for whoever, man, feel free, bro. Come in that motherfucker like it's yours. You, that shit, like it's yours because that's the intention. That's the purpose and intention of it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Goddamn, but we appreciate y'all for fucking with us, man. You know what I mean? Thank you so much for your time. For sure. I know you don't usually do interviews neither. Nope. Yeah, man. They told me, man, Tip gonna have to call him and ask him himself, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate that, man. Love sure. and respect. This has yeah. been Expeditiously. 
Watch your favorite episodes of Expeditiously right now on the Expeditiously YouTube page.